Happy New Year and happy holidays, everyone. Today, we're taking a look back at some of the most compelling conversations we've had on the podcast this last year surrounding the case against Alec Murdoch. Alec Murdoch facing his victims in court just the other day. Victim impact statements being made. And then Alec having the opportunity to, well, say what he thinks about those victim impact statements. And while some may look at it and go, well, you you seem to be somewhat empathetic, but he was also very much ready to correct uh, any misgivings people may have about him, you know, considering he's convicted of killing his family. Uh, yeah. and has admitted to 100 and some financial crimes, uh, convicted now uh, of 20-some uh, of them, about 27 years is what he ultimately ends up getting. But what we're going to do today in this segment is we're going to take a look at the actual trial itself. We are going to get the video playing, and Stacy and myself, we are going to kind of break mm-hmm. this thing down, talk about it a little bit, and just how absurd this shit show was. Because, Thank you for saying it was absurd because I watched it in real time yeah. and I felt like dirty. I felt like they allowed him <laughs> to. Yeah, very dirty. I needed to shower afterwards, but I felt like they allowed him to go back in time and be the lawyer he used to be. It was almost as though he was presenting a case, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah, it was very odd to me. It didn't feel like like somebody who was guilty of a crime talking about themselves and and talking about the victim statements it was it was him being an attorney presenting a case and they even took his handcuffs off because they felt that he needed to use his hands it was just weird it was extremely tone deaf i mean this i mean i I think this is as close as anyone's ever going to get to the version of empathy that everyone wants alec murdoch to have to be able to feel the impact of what he did, but you are always going to get it because this is in this way, because he's a narcissist, he compartmentalizes things the way he wants to. And the only way mm-hmm. he probably knows how to, the only way he's capable, but he's always there with some sort of reason why maybe that's not quite right. And, but that's just my opinion. Just, you got to hear me out. And it's like, dude, just, just fucking own it. Just at the end of yeah. the day, own it. You fucked up. Don't try and correct people on their observations of you because they're all spot on, far more accurate than you are. And I thought Judge Clifton mm-hmm. Newman really did a good job at the end where he uh, he then spoke and addressed Alec directly uh, and, and said what he thought of Alec as he was uh, moving on, basically, as he said, uh, from this case as he gets ready for his retirement uh, in just a few weeks. Let's begin, though. Let's jump into this. It's probably going to be several segments that we're going to break this down in. Uh, but this is Alec Murdaugh and uh, him giving his his statement, if you will. Uh, and also, uh, I should note, playing the victim. Uh, the victims gave their impact statements to him. This is still Alec playing the victim yep. to the victims. Let's watch and we will uh, pause as we need to. I want all of each of you that spoke uh, to know that I listened to you. I heard you, your pain and your hurt is palpable, I get it, it's reasonable, and I promise you that it resonates with me, I understand it. I hope that the time will come when you can look back and know that despite the things that I did, that I care about each one of them. <laughs> let, 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 oh. uh, let's make a pause right there and let you know that I care about each one of you. Oh. What, what, what is- uh, but I, I, I took away your financial freedom, but I care about you. I care about your financial fitness. Alec is someone who I think has gotten away with so much in life simply on words and not actions. And, and yeah. he, he's a, he's a, Good old boy talker. And yeah, you know, because you'll notice he brings up, you will notice in a moment, the amount of times he's going to bring up you and my my daddy were best buddies and papa and 
you know, Jojo and blah, blow and fuck fart. <laughs> and, you know, and we were all friends back in the day. Uh, and it's, it, it's so disconnected from reality, but if you can, if you're trying to put yourself in someone else's shoes and try to get into the mind of a narcissist, it makes per perfect sense. The way he's acting, the way he's acting, it, it doesn't correspond to reality, but it right. is why he acts the way he is. But, can we point out too, yeah. if you're watching the video off his left shoulder, uh, right. If you're looking at the screen, mm -hmm is one of his relatives in a painting on the wall, correct? <laughs> yes, I believe that is, uh, I think that's his great-grandfather or his grandfather. I'm not oh, sure dear God. who. It's one of the solicitors uh, for that county. And, I mean, in the whole family, if you look back at the history, they were well-respected, but they were also feared because of the way that they handled their businesses um, and Ugh. the way that they handled law uh, in uh, South Carolina's low country uh, and basically doing whatever they wanted for all of these years. Uh, let's continue. Uh, let's continue on. I did terrible things. Each of you placed your trust in me. Mm. I'm very proud of that. And I'm still today honored by that fact. But I deceived each of you. Terrible. I did terrible things. Things that I'm thinking about right now. Cause me to be hurt. Cause me to be disturbed. Cause you. Yeah. I mean, it is so important to me. To you. That you know yeah. how bothered that I am by the things that I did. Nobody gives a shit. Oh, well, and you that's feel, the thing. Or he, he like you you nailed it that he is still playing the victim that it's all about him he's not talking about you know he he is mentioning what he did to them mm -hmm. but it's all in in reference is to how it's affecting him currently yeah to me to me it's important to me that you feel what i want you to feel because i'm trying to still control the narrative of all this insanity even mm -hmm. after i've done all of these things so i want you to feel what I want you to believe, even though if it's not necessarily congruent to reality. Uh, yeah. Let's continue on. That's important to me. That's special. It's important to you. That's good, Alan. After hours, days, weeks, days. months of self-reflection, I know now that I took more and more and more pills. Oh. Because I was hiding, or attempting to hide from the reality of the things that I was doing to all of you. Three oh. minutes in and it's on the pills. Three minutes to go to the pills. I do care about each of you. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, have, you don't. You want, you want them to think that you do. I have special recollections of my interactions oh. with each one of you outside <laughs> of the terrible things that I did. <laughs> Doesn't that make it special? I, 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 everybody, everybody's getting real warm fuzzies inside. I'm sure at Christmas dinner, they're all like, no, Alec had real warm recollections of us together. Isn't and it? and he had to take pills to blunt the things that he had done. Mm -hmm. So he did the things, but then it caused him so much pain that he did the things. He had to do something to deaden the pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So most people would say I was a raging alcoholic or drug addict and I did all these things and I don't recall doing them. No, to, the way he put it, he actually did the things and then eh, I guess it was bothering him. So, he, you know, he had to just kind of quell that pain. Yeah. And then that's suddenly like the okay way of dealing with it. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, shake your head, Alec. Make it look like you care. I'm waiting for the snot to start flowing. I wonder how many times he practiced this in his cell. JJ. Oh, JJ. I felt as close to you as anybody. I still do. As anybody I can think of. We grew up together. See, now we go back to childhood. This is Jordan, right? 
JJ? I believe so. It's this gentleman right here. JJ, we and, and fish <clears throat> together, alone, all over the low country. JJ's probably th sitting there thinking, thank I mean, God I, I wasn't one of his victims. Right. Hunted and fished, al fished alone. And man, I hate the things that I did. My daddies were the best of friends. I mean, I mean it. When I say that I care about you, oh, God. as hypocritical as that seems in light of the things I did, it is so very true. I did care about each of you, and I still care about each of you. Um, Michelle, I can't think of a bad day that a hug from Miss Carrie and a kiss from Miss Carrie that she would always give when I would see the two of you. Because he just loves getting real folksy, doesn't he? I can't yeah. think of a day where I wasn't sitting on the porch and a hug from Miss Carrie coming over. And With her sweet tea. Her sweet tea and maybe some light petting, you know, makes it always a great day. With the, uh, oh, I, did I say that? I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Mm. Fucking Alec Murdoch. I never saw one without the other. That that wouldn't make better. And it was usually accompanied by some sage advice or words of wisdom that were always so perfectly appropriate for whatever was going on. I truly love her, and I love you, and I am so sorry. Um, there's so many others that aren't here today um, that I hope will listen. Or be Noticeably, uh, Buster was not Dion. there. Right. Dion's daddy, one of my dearest friends. I can still remember going to Dion's graduation, spending time with him. One more thing, JJ, going back, I do want to tell you as to how close I feel to you. My wife loved you, and you are absolutely right about everything you said, but you are dead wrong mm. about one thing. And I would never hurt Maggie, and I would never hurt Paul. This is the first time he... Uh references uh, Maggie and Paul and denies murdering them. First of many, by the way, as we yeah. go through this. And it is important to me that you know that. Of course it is. You don't want to be known as a murderer. Because she did love you. And I hope you know that. And I hope you know that I mean what I say here today. To make it all go away. <laughs> Jamie, Richard, man, Damien's uncle and daddy were as close to me and my daddy as people can be. Um, Lord knows, Tony. I went to elementary school, middle school, high school with your aunts and your uncles, Ginger. How many classes? Is this supposed to make it like, like he's a better guy because he went to school with people and have these? It makes it worse because these are like yeah. lifelong connections that he's like, you know, and, but. It's for you, man. Yeah. Yep. Brian and Gloria are like a part of my family. I, I can't tell you how fitting it is that his grandfather's portrait is right behind him. It's painful. It's, like it's painful to watch. Staring down at his god-awful grandson. That does bring me to a point, and I will say that I said to Mr. Um, <coughs> Oh, did Alec forget somebody's name? Maggie and I raised our two boys. Oh, I love this this comeback. With input from her mom and dad and input from my mom and dad. But we mm -hmm. are the people 
who raised those boys and us alone. With the help of my sister. Now, with that being said. Do you hear that? With help from my sister? Yeah. That was the sister of Gloria Satterfield, or the brother, rather, of Gloria Satterfield making that statement. Eric, the person he's addressing, is the man. If you're watching this on video, by the way, if you're listening to the podcast, you can watch all of our podcasts now on YouTube with full video uh, if you want to check it out. But Eric Bland is on camera right there. He's been on the show several times. He's the attorney for the Satterfields. And in the victim impact statements, I believe uh, he said something to the effect of, uh, Gloria was one of the people who, if not the person who raised those children, which in reality is quite true. The fact that Al that Alec has the nerve then to come back and say it was Maggie and me and us alone after Gloria was such a major impact on their lives and really did raise those kids. Uh, again, utterly tone deaf, utterly not connected to reality. Yeah, just... Eric, with that being said... There is no person, no person, period, that was more important to my family than Gloria was. To all of us. To me, especially to Maggie. To Paul Paul, Lord knows he adored her. And I hope you know that. And Buster. Oh boy. And me too. You too. Okay. I adore her. And I am so sorry. So sorry. Hey, it's, there's a sorry. This gets weird here in a second. Stand by. It's important to me. Here we go. That you know how sorry I am for the things that I did. To each of you, all my law partners. I think he circles back eventually because he does say something very weird about Satterfield uh, in just a little bit that I almost think was a Freudian slip. There's no guys. I mean, Danny looking at you here kills me. Knowing what I did. I mean, you guys. We shared every facet of my life. Yep. With every member of my family. He's very much trying to make people feel bad for him. And you are my family, Dan. This is not the apology of someone who... Uh, is is coming to terms with this of I, I did these horrible things. This is we did this, we did that. I can't believe this happened. It's you know it's a very narcissistic it's apology. Yeah, it is. As we go along, <laughs> we'll talk this in more detail. Um, but <laughs> to you, it is so important. Two things today that are most important to me is making sure that you do understand that I do care about each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. Number one. And number two, that I am so sorry and that I hate and am so bothered by the things that I did. Okay. What, what is his obsession with every him wanting everyone to care? Or not, know. know that he cares. This, this brings me back to the text that came out in trial that I sent, I believe I sent to my paralegal, Christy, as I became better and less sick in rehab. One of the things... That, that bothered me was knowing 
how I hurt the ones I love the most, the worst. And you all are included in that sentiment. Was it because you got caught, though, or because you, know you, yeah. you were truly bothered? Because if you were truly bothered, you would have stopped these things a long time ago. Well, that's the thing. He just kept doing them. Yeah. To make up the story and the claim. Oh, here we go. About the dogs and glory. I did it with good intentions. Wait. Do you hear that? Wait a minute. When Can I you decided, go back? yeah, when I decided, let's rewind here just a little smidge. This is an important little tidbit to pay attention to. Right. This is big. And you all are included in that settlement. Okay, so I'm coming right back. Here we go. I hope you know that. Tony, Brian, when I decided to make up the story and the claim about the dogs and glory. I did it with good intentions oh. of helping you. I am so sorry that those intentions very quickly became selfish. And I am so um. sorry. Uh, how about the fact that you just said that you made up the story about the dogs and the uh, for the insurance claims? And he had good intentions. And he had good intentions. Yeah. Yes. I mean, this just screamed. I, how did those people in that courtroom not stand up and go, wait, just a cotton picking minute here for a second? Is that you know, cotton, to talk all Southern. Is that the, the do they say that in that area? I haven't heard anybody I, say cotton picking yet in the trial, but I've heard plenty pawpaws and mommies and. Mimas and iced tea yeah. and sweet juice from the teat of the cat. I don't know. I mean, it's always uh, something interesting. Yeah, I, I've heard that down there before. So it's it, it's not appropriate, but I, I could totally hear them yeah. saying it. It's yeah. not politically correct. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was very interesting the way he said that and what he just said. And I think it deserves a little more looking into. Not that I think you're really going to be able to find any information on this anymore, uh, considering uh, Paul and Maggie are dead um, right. and they were there at the time of this taking place. Uh, but there's always been rumors and things where it was like, did someone push her down the stairs? Was it something of that nature? Because you wouldn't have to make up a claim of the dogs tripping her. Right. If it was an accident, if it was a sock, it would be the same claim. If it went, No matter what it is, as long as it wasn't an intentional pushing someone down the stairs... Mm -hmm. insurance would still pay out. They only would not as if this was some sort of an intentional deed. So why the fuck this ever had to be painted as something that it wasn't doesn't make a lot of sense at all. So I don't know. I thought that it's was an interesting moment there for Alec Murdoch continuing on. That I continue to involve you in my actions. And I am so sorry for everything that you and I want to make sure the whole family knows that I am so sorry for everything that you have been through. Um, and JJ, I really want to take you up on your offer that uh, you proposed earlier, but I also hope that in time <coughs> that each of you will be willing to talk with me because I would like, as time moves on, to continue to reiterate just how sorry I am and just how important it is to me that you know that. It's so crazy. He's so obsessed and thinks that it matters to them how he feels. How he feels. Not how they feel. Right. It matters to him how they view Alec. It's not, yeah. I hope you're moving on with your life. I'm going to serve my time. I'm going to go pay for my dues. Don't, don't waste any more of your time on me. I've already taken up enough of your life. Uh, I, I, if you want to talk to me, if you want some, I'm, I'm here. But this whole, please come, because I really want you to hear me. That is 100%. Uh, a malignant narcissist speaking right there. 
There is more uh, to come in the Alec Murdaugh uh, speech, if you will, uh, from his sentencing hearing for the financial crimes. And we will continue to bring that to you in our next statement. Stay with us. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.